There are many ways to implement error handling with GraphQL. In an episode 30, we covered using union types to handle some of the user errors. Here we can see we have a mutation for login that accepts an input and it returns a auth payload. This auth payload was a union type, which could either contain the user, the incorrect credentials error type, the user suspended error, or the user banned error. And all of these different error types were just types that implemented the interface error. They'd all return their individual messages and everything would be fine. But this required on the client side when you ran that mutation to always be checking the type name to display the correct error. Let's take this a step further and remove the need for union types. Instead, we'll just use plain old types, but this time we'll have some nullable types. And in the future, this can use the one of directive that will come to GraphQL. So here where we return user for our update user mutation, we'll instead return something else and we'll call this update user result. Now this type update user result will contain a success type and a error type. For success, we'll return update user success. And then for the error, we'll return update user error. Both of these fields are nullable. In the future, we'll be able to take advantage of the one of directive that's coming to GraphQL. Tools like the GraphQL code generator already implement the one of directive. So this will create the correct types for either success or error being one of these in the responses. Let's remove one off for now for the purposes of this video, and we'll just work with the fact that both of these can be nullable. But now we have two different fields, success and error. For the success type, let's now return that updated user. And for the error type, here we can include a little more information. And for the type update user error, we can implement the existing error interface where we have a message that's of the type string. And now we can add additional information to this error and this could be in the format of some input errors. In here, we'll use another type, update user input errors. And for this type, we can include all of the different errors that we have on our input type that we want to display errors for. We just have the one field username that users can update in the mutation. So let's return username here as a string. If you had any other fields, this is where you would put those errors. Let's remove those additional fields and now let's work with this schema. We have a mutation to update a user that accepts an input type. Now let's create the input type for update user input. And here we'll provide the same name field for that user. Then instead of our resolver, all that's needed to do is check for any errors from the input arguments. And here we just have one that is to check to see if the username already exists. And if it does, we return a simple error object that contains the message and all of our input errors. And here we can display a friendly name, username is taken, that can be displayed below the forms in our input. And then we have all of the input errors that can be displayed below each of the input fields in our form. If there are no errors, we can simply return a success happy path that contains the updated user and that user's new name. So back inside of Graphical, now let's run a mutation to update the user. He'll provide a username with a happy path. This username is not taken. So then let's fetch that successful path, which is updated user. And here we can get the actual updated username. So let's execute this and we can now see the result for our successful update to our user it contains the updated user and the username. Now, if we go to get any of the errors, we can get the message and we can also get the input errors for each of our fields. So if we run this, you'll see we get no error. But if we update the username, to be a username that already exists and we execute that mutation. We should now say we don't have a successful happy path, but we have an error with a message and some detailed information about each of our fields. Hopefully this video has given you a new idea on how you can manage form errors within your GraphQL API.